unfortunately, I gotta disappoint you because while uh, I may look a bit like an Italian uh, and I have an Italian shirt, uh, but I don't speak any Italian language at all. So uh, uh, we gotta do this um, in English. And if I'm going too fast, please try to slow me down. So there are billions of people um, in our world, people without a safety net, people lie awake in the night worrying that they may lose everything they have or they fall back to poverty in case the, the breadwinner dies or in case of a serious event. Uh, our vision at LeapFrog is um, to change that. We want to provide a safety net for every heard this before and uh, from previous speakers, um, we all know that charity and development aid alone will not solve the problem in the world. Even if um, the world's largest foundation, like the Bill Gates Foundation, they have like 40 billion in assets, if they would give away all the 40 billion to the 4 billion low income people, that'd be just $10 per person. So that money would just last, well, not even a week. So. If you're serious about ending poverty in the world, uh, you got to go to a place where there's sufficient capital, sufficient capital to reach 4 billion people. And the obvious place to go to is the capital market. The capital markets where private and institutional investors uh, invest trillions of dollars um, in, in, in various projects. This is kind of the, uh, um, the way to, to go and that, that's exactly what we did at LeapFrog. So, what we have done is, uh, we've put together um, the world's first micro-insurance fund. So it's a private equity fund that invest, invests in insurance companies uh, that provides affordable insurance to low-income people. And uh, we wanted to end the traditional trade-off between uh, profit and meaning. So that's why we have put together, and Tom mentioned this, a profit with purpose fund. So uh, what does it actually mean? It means we want to achieve returns for our investors uh, while also helping to lift 25 million people out of poverty. We were lucky to win, uh, uh, for instance, Bill Clinton to support us and we launched our fund in 2008 and uh, Bill Clinton highlighted LeapFrog as being the insurer to the poor. So, as I said, we, we do invest in companies uh, that provide insurance or related services to people, to, to the very poor people in emerging markets. And I will talk about the investment focus and strategy in a, in a while. But let me, uh, let me stress one point here, and that's the team. That's really, like in any other business or venture or NGO, it's all about the people. So we have assembled kind of a world-class team. Uh, it's really the, the leading team. Uh, in impact investing in financial services and, uh, and, and our team has uh, decades of experience in, um, in not just in doing investments but also in, in operations, in running insurance companies in emerging markets, running financial services businesses and um, this is very important because the investors obviously uh, you know, provide capital to the fund and obviously they want to make sure that the money is being invested, um, you know, after having done a lot of analysis and, and due diligence. And the other thing is, we need passionate people, and I'm, we're, we're lucky to have them. Not just commercially uh, sound kind of people, but also people with a passion for helping uh, poor people. And we have two people on our team, for instance, who wrote literally wrote, wrote the book on microinsurance. Uh, we have done the, the largest uh, analysis and, and uh, studies analyzing the need for microinsurance in 100 countries uh, around the world. So our investors include leading development banks such as uh, the IFC, International Finance Corporation, um, European Investment Bank, uh, we have the German Development Bank, KFW, which is the largest microfinance lender in the world. Um, but we also have private investors, institutional investors such as Leading pensions fund, leading pension funds in the U.S. like TRF. Um, we 
also have uh, banks like JP Morgan. Um, we have uh, insurance companies who, uh, who like our strategy, um, like Spore, which is the, the, the fourth largest uh, reinsurer in the world, um, and um, also some, uh, some private individuals, as well as uh, we get the support from the German government um, because they, they see this, what we're doing, as an important add-on to their development aid. So, how big is the microinsurance market? What is really the opportunity? According to an estimate from uh, Lloyd's, Lloyd's of London, there are one and a half to three billion people in the world who don't have insurance today, but would be able and willing to pay for affordable insurance. Swiss Re came out with a study saying there, that the market for microinsurance is 40 billion US dollars. And um, to um, put even some more zeros behind that, there is JP Morgan, who recently came out with an analysis looking at the whole bottom of the pyramid market and saying this whole market is worth um, 400 billion to, to 1 trillion. So these are pretty huge numbers. Uh, if it's only half the size or only 10% of the size, it's still uh, an amazing big market. And you may understand you know, why private investors now get interested in um, those kind of markets. So what is, what is microinsurance? Microinsurance basically is, is low premium insurance. Uh, it can be health insurance, it can be life insurance, it can be weather or acro related insurance, or it could cover um, other risks. And you, you can imagine the huge social impact and, and benefit that uh, microinsurance provides because not only it provides a safety net for people, but it also allows the families to accumulate assets to save and it's also enabling I think this is very important it enables small social entrepreneurs farmers uh, informal traders basically to take on certain risks that they otherwise wouldn't be able to take so in, in that sense um, micro insurance is similar to micro credit um, as it helps the people to get themselves out of poverty there are many people ask me why I personally um, became interested in, in that topic and uh, put so much of my head and heart thought in that. Um, and there is a, a little story that uh, kind of occurred to me. Um, in my previous life, um, I was leading the global corporate development activities of, um, of Swiss Re. So I spent uh, quite some time in emerging markets. And uh, one day I was walking through the streets of uh, Mumbai and uh, a, a very poor and um, injured man came to me and asked for money. Um, his name's Rajiv, I found out later. It turned out Rajiv has six kids, and has a wife and lives with all, the whole family and his grandparents in a small shack in the slums of Mumbai. So I asked what, what would happen to him and, and he basically said, well, he was lucky in, initially because he was working very hard, saved some money, and was able to buy himself a rickshaw. This allowed him to earn some money, feed his family, the kids didn't need to work, uh, could go to school. But then suddenly he had a very, very bad accident. The, the good thing was that the rickshaw was still okay, but the very bad and uh, tragic thing was Rajiv was, uh, it was very, um, broke his shoulder, he had issues with, a, with his leg, so he couldn't do any work anymore, he had to go to a hospital. The hospital said he wouldn't treat him. Why? Because he doesn't have any uh, health insurance or has no money. So what, what Rajiv did is, he had to sell his rickshaw. So he, the guy really had to sell, this is the means of earning money in order to pay for his medical bill. And this is something which is obviously is unbelievable for us Europeans. Uh, being used to this um, standard of um, social uh, security system that we have. All right, so these are the target markets. Um, India, for us target markets, uh, we invest in India, Southeast Asia, and Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, this alone represents a market of around uh, 2 billion uh, people. How do we work? Um, 
basically we provide equity capital and expertise to our portfolio companies. We typically invest 5 to 20 million US dollars into each company and we provide expertise and this could be expertise on how to design products for low-income people, it could be helping, these are, and you must imagine, small insurance companies. We help them with risk management, we help them with financing, we help them with um, kind of reinsurance, and we help them with strategy and all things that a typical private equity fund or a good private equity fund um, typically tells you that they would do it, but would we truly do it? Because if we don't do it, um, you know, we, we won't achieve the, re the returns and, um, that we want to do. We also have put together a sister vehicle which is called LeapFrog Labs. This is um, donor funded. This is a $5 million uh, pot of money that we were able to get from uh, wealthy families, from government, from development banks. And we use this money um, basically for us and for our portfolio companies to pursue game-changing innovation ideas. So to give you one example, we look at mobile technology. You may have heard about Kenya. Kenya, 75% um, of all people use their cell phone to do money transfers. And we try to use new technologies to reach even more people with insurance. We also look at client education, which is very important. Because many people don't know what, what insurance really is. People know loans, but if you go to a person in the Philippines and you ask him he should pay $1 per month to us or to our insurance company, I mean, he needs to trust us. He doesn't know what insurance really means, so why should he pay us one dollar per month? So there's a lot of client education that we need to do, um, and uh, we just, uh, we just that's, that's what we needed. So far we've invested 40 million US dollars into three companies. In India, we have uh, invested in the Shiran Group, which is one of the largest distribution company for financial services products and with them we're reaching 10 million people so that's uh, quite a big number compared to um, Switzerland for instance so we reached 10 million people today uh, with affordable insurance products in Kenya we have invested 13 million dollars um, into a leading insurance business and this is by far the, the largest micro insurance deal in Africa and this is basically will be becoming uh, the, the largest East African insurer focused on, on really serving the, uh, uh, the low income people. And then in South Africa we have invested in a very unique and very innovative insurer. It's a, it's a life insurance company and what they do is they provide life insurance cover to people who have HIV. So this is really fascinating. Uh, to see that there are, with new ideas, um, it's really possible to insure people, even those people who live with HIV, because you can really expand the lifespan of people with HIV uh, for more than 10 or 15 years today. So here's a nice quote from, um, from the CEO of one, of one of our portfolio companies. I think this is a, a, nice, a nice quote that describes how we work and of LeapFrog. Uh, he said the LeapFrog investment is much more than just another investment in the group. It's a strategic partnership that will redefine financial inclusion in India. And here's a quote from one of our investors, JP Morgan. He said an investment by LeapFrog enables companies to increase scale, success and speed to market while reducing risk. So one issue that, that you always face is that there are lots of interesting ideas in various countries, but the companies don't have the capital to really scale and to reach not just thousands of people, um, but really hundreds of thousands or millions of people. And with our capital and expertise, we enable the companies uh, to do that. And uh, this is uh, the president of the Soros Fund, also one of our investors. He said, visionary investors are backing the LeapFrog team to build high growth companies that support critically underserved communities by providing access to affordable insurance to millions of people. So, uh, as, as explained, we have great support from, from very 
famous investors around the world, from governments and also from the media globally. We believe we're just at the beginning of a, of a wave. Um, it's a historic moment, we think. Impact investment is today very small, but has a huge potential. And um, we would love to see a hundred more leapfrogs coming up so that um, we all together could really make a, a big impact in reducing poverty in the world and, uh, and making this place um, a better world. And uh, I've been talking too much, so I thought to do, to, to stop with, because it's getting late and people are getting tired, to do a bit of entertaining things. I have a small video, it's uh, BBC put together a small video um, featuring LeapFrog and also one of our portfolio companies and talking about India. So um, you may actually enjoy it. It's just only four minutes. Hello and welcome to India Business Report. I'm Rajini Vaidyanabhan in Mumbai. India's growing middle classes have long been a target for many companies. But now another consumer sector is being targeted by investors more and more. And that's people living below the poverty line. But can businesses make a profit and serve a social purpose? From Delhi, Shilpa Kanan reports. Sorting out plastic bags collected from rubbish tips is a serious business for Virender Kumar. Once it's sorted according to the type of plastic, he sells them to recycling units to be melted down into plastic pellets. Employing laborers to work for him, he makes around 20,000 rupees or $450 of profit every month. But he has bigger ambitions that need funding. I collected waste plastic bags and saved money to start this recycling unit. I want to hire people, expand this business, but everything needs money. Banks don't lend to people like me. In a country where millions of people have little or no access to formal finance, investment funds with an intention to make a social impact are stepping in by lending a helping hand. These funds are investing in people and sectors where traditional banks won't go. It's profit with a purpose. People like Virender Kumar are now being wooed by financial institutions like this one. But loans aren't the only way of helping small businessmen. Providing micro-insurance can be a safety net to prevent people from falling back into poverty. That's why a US-based impact investment fund, Leapfrog, has put in $15 million investment in the Sriram Group to target the lower end mass market with insurance rather than loans. If you're a farmer, you can begin to invest because you know if things go wrong, you'll be able to get back up on your feet again and your children won't starve. So the ability with a very limited percentage of your income, one or two or three percent, to totally reshape your microeconomic picture and the daily choices you and your family makes is a huge opportunity. What isn't happening is companies getting to grips with the notion that you can serve that population. And we find it's a very narrow slice of companies. Fortunately, we're engaging with them. While the private sector is risk averse to invest in such people, just government resources and charitable donations are not able to address the enormous social problems. Impact investments offer an alternative to channel large-scale private capital for social benefit. This is a huge and growing sector. Recognizing this growing segment, the biggest newspaper in the country has announced awards for social impact. Rahul Kansal is the organizer of the awards and he says there are huge opportunities for social impact in the country. The government itself is progressively including uh, the role of uh, non-profits as well as uh, for-profit companies in everything from waste management to education to skill development to the provision of healthcare services. So I think that this is a sector that is likely to see increasing opportunities both for corporate social responsibility kind of project as well as for companies and entrepreneurs armed with, the, with an interesting idea, uh, a low-cost uh, efficient idea to deliver uh, 
social services to the common man. A loan helped finance a new truck for Virender Kumar, increasing his profits by over 50 percent. Finding the right lender has unleashed his economic potential. It's people like him who are benefiting the most by impact investments. They are people who are making the transition from the informal to the formal sectors. And bringing financial products to them gives them a chance to be included in the country's rapidly growing economy. Well, that's all we've got time for on this week's program, but do make sure you join us next week on India Business Report. In the meantime, if you want to keep updated with all the latest business news, you can go to our website, bbc.com slash asiabusiness. You can find us on Facebook. Just search under BBC Business. From me and everyone else on the team, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Regini Vaidyanathan in Mumbai. See you next week.